Hey there everybody, welcome to Latvia and as you can see my beard is on full point today and just lovely and bushy but however I am here to show you my first impression review of the new Subaru XV, the all new Subaru Forester e-boxes. So let me take you around the XV, this is my first time dealing with the XV with Subaru, um, with the Forester, of course you know I've uh, already reviewed the Mark IV, however we have got the Mark V here. Both of these cars are E-boxes, they are mild hybrids and it's the first time Subaru has done a mild hybrid on their cars. So, without further ado, let me take you around the XV and we'll go straight round the uh, Forester as well. Now it is finished in Lagoon Blue and it's a stunning colour, incredibly distinctive. And as you know about the XV, it has had a midlife facelift, so it's a lot sharper in terms of styling. But um, yeah, I'll quickly take you around it. The big thing is this badge here, which is the new e-boxer badge. So as I said, it's a mild hybrid system on the car. Actually, I forgot that it's a left-hand drive. Um, mild hybrid system, so it works in conjunction with the linear Tronic gearbox. As you know, with Subaru, they have the CVT gearboxes. And you know what? It works much better than just the standard two litre boxer engine. So it has got the two litre, 148 brake horsepower. It's a lot more responsive than, um, than you might think. It kind of feels like a little turbo is kind of kicking in, just giving you a little bit of extra oomph, particularly when uh, accelerating. Now, both of these cars have been off-road, actually have been extreme off-road and are very capable. But with the XV, because it's my first time dealing with it, I will show you some of the features now let's go to the inside where this is a particular highlight for me i am loving the interior of the xv so there's a lot of copper on the dash which i really do like it gives a bit of um, extra uh, exuberance to the car and also we've got some bright orange stitching as well also here on the steering wheel and also on the seats I think it's leather rest on there, but we've got some orange accents in the middle. I'm not sure if that's coming out at all. Yes, it is. And then we've got the white and orange stitching on the outside. These are very comfortable seats, but it gives very much the impression that this is a lifestyle vehicle. You know, the person that's going to buy this is going to have an active lifestyle. They're going to have kids who do a lot of activities in their spare time. And yeah, that's kind of explains why this is a bestseller for, uh, for Subaru. This is their best selling car. It is a good looking car, I do like the looks. Let me know what you think, click up in the top right hand corner if you like the looks of the XV. And then in the back, we've got the same patterning on the seats. Again, leatherette, all feels nice and durable. The actual interior quality materials is very good. And then we have a rumbly diesel, drive past me. And as I said, it's very, dirty now here's the boot so the boot could possibly be a little bit of a weak link against some of its rivals but it's a nice square shape you've got very little in the way of a bootlet and then if I can just try and find there we go if I lift this up we've got a little bit of extra storage there but also the batteries are actually underneath the boot floor so there is a compromise with boot space in that regard there's no space saver spare wheel it will be something like the um, tire puncture repair kit and I'll just bring that down. So again, we've got the badge in, the e-boxer on the XV. Um, for any American viewers who are watching, unfortunately, this car is not coming to the US, or the e-boxer, should I say, is not coming to the US, as you have got your own plug-in hybrids. But that is the XV. Very impressed by it. It drives very well. It's a very fun car to drive, very relaxing car to drive, but let's move. Right, so you now join me inside the Subaru XV e-boxer. So on this launch, there are two new models. So we've already seen the Forester. We're now in the XV. After 110 meters, turn left. Will do. Um, so the Forester is an all new car. It's on an all, all new platform, oh, sharing, right. sharing the same platform with the uh, Impreza. The XV, it's still the same car as before. It's not an all new car, but it is now given the e-boxer treatment. So like the Forester, it's a mild hybrid system. We've got a battery pack located under the boot floor and the 
kind of electric motor is linked in with the Lineatronic gearbox or CVT um, gearbox. So it gives you an extra 10% efficiency because now all Subarus are petrol uh, driven cars and it means you get a little extra 10% efficiency and also when it comes to the response from the accelerator pedal a little bit more response there and also helps with off-roading now as before with the Forester I am joined by Michael from Planet Auto and uh, he's on his first international launch of a car first time driving off-road and I'm starting this kind of first impression review of the XE Boxer XV E Boxer I should say off-road so the first big surprise to tell you is that the XV has the same ground clearance as the Forester and when you look at these two cars yes they're both big kind of estate cars the XV is just looks like more of an active you know vehicle it looks more kind of like a funky lifestyle very cool looking whereas the forest is very utilitarian this it, is like a jacked up hatchback exactly in yeah comparison to a full-size suv exactly and and yesterday we got the chance to drive these off-road and actually see what the off-road capabilities were like and as you know from the forester i have driven a forester before the current uh, Mark 4 version and of course that's going to be replaced with the upcoming Mark 5 and the e-boxer uh, version But this is my first time driving an XV and I can I'll be honest. I can see the appeal of it I mean, it's in a lagoon blue exterior color, which I think is very striking. It does turn heads um, Funky, you know the chunky alloys as well. They've really got a nice design to them. The car itself just looks very attractive I think it's standout styling. It is standout styling and it does Advertise itself for those who have an active lifestyle if you want to take Your BMX bikes, you know your kayak anything like that you can whack it on the roof and you can go off-road you can drive to the lake you can drive to the the BMX trail and seeing what the XV can do is hugely impressive like we've we've been driving on all various types of roads I'm now going from kind of a dirt track to a lot of loose gravel but sound wise noise wise there's hardly anything coming into well, the cabin we were saying that what well, we've driven probably 20 or so kilometers today on unpaved roads yeah and really there's not it's there's no compromise compared no. to being on tarmac really um, not really it's it's hugely impressive if, if anything because of the fact that this has got that active look to it the cool chunky you know the cool looks to it this is more impressive than the Forester mm. and because of that and that it, it shows as well that the XV is the most popular car that um, that Subaru is selling and I think having the e-boxer technology the mild hybrid technology is only going to boost that now we did a little bit of off-road driving earlier for um, Michael's segment for his piece for um, for Planet Auto and he actually drove a surprising portion of that off-road you are at this moment actually. and actually I am at this moment purely in EV and it's not a full self-charging EV it's not like a Toyota Prius it's not a plug-in hybrid like um, Trying, like a, an Outlander, a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Well, Soul Electric range is only well, it's, it's between one and two miles. It's, yeah. Um, but well, it kicks in like it does now. Um, yeah, and now the engine's kicked in. It's all very sensitive throttle response, really. Yes. It activates it. So it comes down to um, it actually comes down to a degree level of how much input you put into the accelerator. Usually, you kind of say if you put like a you know ten percent. Um, throttle response down it'll be in EV mode we actually went with an actual angle you need to put 10 degrees in or something like that so being a mild hybrid it is very much in the same realms of an Audi A6 BMW 5 Series and the Mercedes E-Class I know I've mentioned that before with the um, with the Forester so being a mild hybrid when you are coasting when you're driving on roads and you're coasting you're going downhill it will um, it will kind of chop and change between back, uh, electric power and the petrol engine. So it has got a very traditional Subaru engine, two liter boxer engine with 148 brake horsepower. Will do. And again, fitted to a Lineatronic gearbox and the all-wheel drive system. 
it all works. You know what, with the mild hybrid system, it feels a lot better than just a standard XV, even though I've not driven one before, but I know there's gonna be a little bit of hesitation, there's gonna be a little bit of lag when you put your foot down and get that initial response. See, I have driven the well, the XV that doesn't yeah. have a hybrid system, and there is a noticeable power increase there. Uh, of course, due to the nature of the Lineatronic gearbox, it still doesn't like to be hurried. You, you do get, it doesn't sound like it wants to be hurried, but yeah. when you look at the speedo, speed is increasing quite quickly. Yeah, it's designed to increase the response time when you put your foot down um, and you want to overtake. One of the things you'll know with a CVT gearbox, with a Lineatronic gearbox, they don't want to be hurried. And what happens is you have that, you put your foot down, the gearbox takes, it does take a second maybe, to get itself into gear, and then it kind of holds onto one of those gears. So you do get the infamous CVT whine that, uh, that I have experienced before. Again, with the Forester, click up in the top right-hand corner, you can watch that video. And it kind of, yeah, it is there. I mean, it's, but the, what it is, is that the actual speed, is is a lot quicker in the way it kind of goes up and you can overtake that's the key thing you can overtake in this it almost feels like there is a little turbo in there just giving you that little extra oomph to get you away uh from the lights to get you overtaking and um you know and getting the most out of not just the engine but that hybrid hybrid system so i mean this is my first ever drive in a subaru xv so going straight for the e-boxer, I am thoroughly impressed. I am, I'm more impressed with the XV than I am with the Forester. We know the Forester is hugely capable, but knowing that this has got pretty much the same capabilities of that larger flagship and not really with any major compromises is a huge, huge deal. I love the looks, I love the paint on this. It looks absolutely awesome. Um, and I can see the appeal of it. I can actually see the appeal of having the um, active lifestyle, of course, looking at me, clearly it's not that active, but I can understand families with young kids that are doing lots of things in their spare time, they're doing a lot of activities. Having a car like this, which looks cool, practical, I mean, granted, because of the battery pack, it's not got the biggest boot, and I think rivals have got a little bit more practicality there, but they've definitely not got the same level of ability off-road ability definitely i think in terms of rivals and i know i spoke to um michael about this on his on his piece the latest rival i reckon for this car but it's not hybrid yet we don't know what's going to happen will do is the new kia exceed because there seems to be a new generation of cars hatchbacks that are coming through they've got a little bit more road uh road clearance a little bit more Ground clearance, I think that's the word, the best way to describe it. I think also it'll be at a similar price point as yeah. well. Yeah, but it won't have, it might not have the hybrid technology, but we do know with Kia, we do know with the Hyundai group, that they have got... It is available to them. Yeah, it, they, it's in the, a lot of their other models and they are becoming an established brand for those type of EV vehicles. So possibly watch this space in terms of arrival to the XV. But no, I can understand definitely why this is a very popular car why it's one of the best sellers for um subaru and long may it continue i'm looking forward to perhaps having one of these for a week and seeing in a full review living with um the e-boxer the the hybrid system in a real life world i mean i live in milton Keynes, so how's this going to deal with the terrible roundabouts and the off-roading that you know is available to me in milton Keynes? but first impressions of the XV e boxer, very positive. I really do like the car. The interior, as you saw from the walk around video, I love the interior. I love the vibrant orange stitching. I love the copper effect. I've said before in other cars, copper is making a comeback, I think. And it just it works very well. This is very much a funky young family kind of car. And yeah, I am impressed. Then, Michael, anything, anyone, anything you want to say um, for a final bit? I, I think it's a great all-rounder. Um, I yeah. think if you're after this type of car with a hybrid option, well, you, the Subaru XC is about your only option. I is. I'm, I'm trying to think of rivals. I mean, I would possibly say a Kia Nero could be. 
but a it little wouldn't bit. be able to do anything. It wouldn't be able to do yeah. the off-roading. It's more of a kind of crossover yeah. SUV. Like but yeah. anything with true off-road capabilities. I'm struggling. Yeah. I'm really I'm struggling. Without a doubt, this can do it. And as you can see from you know what I've got in front of me, this Latvia has been an absolute joy, an absolute treat to behold. Uh, it's very pretty. I mean, you saw from the Forrester video, um, from some of the little bits and some of the photos I've posted on social media, some of the roads, they just go straight and they just keep going. And it's a very photogenic country. And I, yeah, it's, a, it's an absolute joy. And it's I do, a hidden gem. It is a hidden gem. Um, and I think it's probably because of the history of the country and what they've had to go through that we've been able to, you know, appreciate what it's been able to offer us. And then yesterday with the test track, which again, if you follow on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, you would have seen some of those uh, highlights out, out there. Unfortunately, we couldn't film, but you know, I'm thoroughly impressed. Um, yeah, I, this, this, this gets a big thumbs up from me. I love the looks. It drives really well. We're driving off road. I could not do this road in a normal road car, in a normal estate car. Uh, I'd be worried about what would happen to the tyres. I'd be worried about the underside and any damage. But this is taking it all in its stride, and I am thoroughly impressed. So, yeah, well done, Subaru. I am uh, <laughs> very much falling for the XV. Top marks. Yes. yes. So, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my first impression review of the e-boxers from Subaru. So that is the new Forester and the new XV uh, e-boxer. Again. Big thank you to, uh, to Michael for coming along for his first overseas launch with Planet Auto. Of course, guys, give them a like, give them a subscribe. Um, as always, please hit the like button. If you've got any questions or queries about the Subarus that we've driven, please put them down in the comments section below. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I always advise, please follow on there as well and like, because there is additional content, a lot of still images. I do live videos, and you can sometimes see me goofing off with a big cheesy smile on my face if I'm doing something fun. So yeah, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video of the first impression review of the new Subaru e-boxes, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care. Right, a little extra something for you. So, me and Michael, as... Wonderful. Um, <laughs> because me and Michael are vloggers, one of the aspects that tends to happen is you do a lot of filming like we're doing right now and when you get set up your GoPros when you get everything done you do your walk around video it can take a little bit of time especially if you fluff up your lines yes. so here's a little added bonus because we're now chasing down one of the team um, because we are right at the back of the pack and of course with these kind of launches there is a flight at the end of it and we don't want to miss our flight in fact actually we've um, we're in um chasing the Subaru technicians. Yes, we're chasing the technicians who are picking up all the signs to make sure we don't get lost and we go the right way. Which sounds counterproductive because that means they take the signs and then we drive past. But um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a real rally stage feel to, uh, to driving this at, um, it's only 60 kilometers an hour. It's around 45 miles an hour, I think, probably a little bit less. But this thing is just dealing with everything you throw it in. yeah really hugely impressive we've got a little dust cloud in front you can probably just see i think in the uk actually you wouldn't be able to find anything with this car no handle. oh we've caught them. there they are well, <laughs> they really are going through. yeah see that's the thing with subaru there's all that racing pedigree from rallying and they are going for it, but don't worry, we've got the same ground clearance as them. <laughs> now the problem is we can't see where we're going. I've oh, just followed the dust cloud and there you go. Right, we have got the, yes, we've got the recirculation on, so we've got no dust coming through into the cabin. No, once again, hugely impressive car. Hugely impressive.